In this video, we'll cover drive block replacement for the Slimrack slide out system. You'll need the following tools a cordless drill, bits appropriate for the hardware found in your installation, a flathead screwdriver, a floor jack, and extensions if necessary, and needle nose pliers. You'll also need one of the following. A 9mm wrench for motor brackets using a retention screw. Or a pick tool for motor brackets using a spring and hook. Retract the slide out using a rocker switch or touch pad if it isn't already fully retracted. With a cordless drill, remove the mounting screws holding the end brackets in place on the slide out wall. We can now fully extend the slide out. Use a floor jack or lift to support the weight of the room. From the coach's interior, decouple the motor from the wiring harness. Depending on the configuration of your assembly, you'll either use a 9mm wrench to loosen the retention screw or a pick tool to unseat the spring from the bracket hook. Use a flathead screwdriver to pry the motor free of the coupler, then lift it up and away from the column and set it aside. Returning to the coach's exterior, we can now use a cordless drill to remove the screws mounting the exterior end brackets to the slide out wall. Use a cordless drill to remove the mounting screws from the column assembly. Pull the assembly free of the wall of the unit. Then make note of which side is the top and the bottom before proceeding. Slide the drive shaft and drive block assemblies through the bottom of the column. Remove the coupler. Let's disassemble the drive blocks, beginning with the upper drive block that had previously supported the motor. Use a flathead screwdriver or needle nose pliers to remove the inner spring clip. Allow the drive block to travel an inch or two down the length of the drive shaft, then remove the outer spring clip. Then slide the drive block free of the drive shaft. Repeat this step the lower drive block assembly. Let's separate the gear rack and drive block. Remove the push nut from the grooved pin using needle nose pliers or a flathead screwdriver. The push nut can be discarded since it is a single use item. Remove the grooved pin. Repeat this step for each end bracket. The gear racks can now be pulled free of the drive block. Next, we'll assemble the replacement drive block onto the drive shaft. Slide the lower bearing flange, flange side first, onto the drive shaft. Position the drive shaft inside the drive block. The spur gear is first installed to the drive block before being slid onto the drive shaft. The spur gear will have two timing marks on its face. Ensure the dot side is in the 12 o'clock position while being installed to the drive block and drive shaft. Guide the drive block and spur gear onto the drive shaft. Install the upper bearing flange, flange side last, onto the drive shaft. Install the outer spring clip. Guide the assembly towards the spring clip until it's flush to it. Install the lower spring clip through a notch on the bottom of the upper drive block assembly. Because the drive blocks are identical in shape and in orientation, the lower drive block installation procedure is slightly different from the first. Begin by installing the inner spring clip to the drive shaft. Install the lower bearing flange, 
flange side first onto the drive shaft. The drive block and drive shaft are staged for spur gear installation just like before. The spur gear requires the timing dot be placed in the 12 o'clock position as it's installed to the spur gear housing. With both gears oriented the same way, we can be sure that the gear racks will be in sync when we install them later. Install the bearing flange. Flange side last onto the drive shaft. The outer spring clips are installed to the drive shaft through a notch in the drive block and is installed below the lower bearing flange. With the replacement drive blocks assembled to the drive shaft, we can now install the gear racks. Ensure that your drive blocks are facing the same direction. In our case, we've pointed the wiper seals towards the inside of our workspace. Install the gear racks by mating them to the spur gears simultaneously. Rotate the assembly so that the racks lay flat on the table. Then manually rotate the drive shaft until the gear racks run about halfway through the drive block assembly. We can now reinstall the drive blocks and drive shaft into the column. Slide the drive shaft and block through the bottom of the column channel, leading with the drive block that couples to the motor. Secure end brackets to either side of both gear racks using a grooved pin and replacement push nut. Reinstall the motor coupler to the drive block. Install the column to the wall of your unit while supporting the drive shaft from below. With a cordless drill, remount the column flange to the exterior wall of your unit. Align the gear rack end brackets to their previous position on the slide out room wall. Then use a cordless drill to secure them back onto their mounting points. With the end brackets secured to the wall, the floor jack can now be removed. From the unit's interior, reinstall the motor to the drive block and coupler. To secure the motor, use a 9mm wrench to tighten down the retention screw to the bracket only a couple of turns or use a pick tool to seat the spring over the motor bracket hook. Reconnect the motor wiring harness to the wiring harness coupler. Then use your touchpad or switch controller to fully retract the room. With a cordless drill, mount the interior end brackets on the gear racks to the slide out wall to complete the drive block replacement procedure.